Okay, here is our focus project. It is Minky Monsters, and it is Embroidery Online Collection, 12399. So one of the most common arguments I hear about sewing with Minky fabric is how difficult it is to embroider with. Many people, especially beginners, are too nervous to try sewing and embroidering with it. So the good news is that there are some tips we have with working with Minky. And um, the first tip, number one, is don't allow the Minky to stretch as you cut it. Let the fabric lie flat, and by adding a few pins here and there, uh, it will keep the selvages together and help you to reduce slipping of the fabric while you're cutting it. And just a little note, Miki is stable and parallel to the selvage. Tip number two, don't iron Miki. Keep the heat on low to prevent any damage to the Miki fabric. Too much heat can ruin the nap, and if there's any dots or embossing on the Miki, it can ruin that also. A good practice is to have a um, is to place your minky face down on a towel and press gently on low heat. Also, I hear you can steam it and that works well too. Tip number three, minky has a nap. Before you start a project, make sure you note the nap of the minky and cut pieces accordingly if you want the nap to lay in a particular direction. Tip number four, Minky does not shrink, so there's no need to pre-wash. Yay! Minky is made from polyester, so um, we're moving on to tip five, which is when cutting minky, be prepared for a lot of fuss. Um, when cutting minky, be prepared for a lot of fuzz. <laughs> Try cutting the pieces with a rotary cutter and then taking them outside to shake them off, or I found it keep that vacuum handy and it cuts back on some of the mess. But it's always good to remember never to cut minky when using a stationary fan, a ceiling fan, <laughs> or anything that could blow the fuzz about the room. Tip number six, clean your machine throat plate, feed dogs, bobbin case, and the foot often. Tip number seven, Replay, if you're having any trouble with your standard embroidery needle, you can try replacing it with um, a standard embroidery needle with a size 90 stretch. Following these simple tips will make your life, at least when you're embroidering with Minky, a whole lot easier and more enjoyable. Here's some of the supplies we'll be needing for our Minky Monster. Embroidery Online Design Collection, 1, 2, 3, 9, 9, Minky Monsters. It just came out last week. Two pieces of Minky fabric, one inch larger than the chosen design. One piece will be for the front of your monster, and that's the piece that we're going to be embroidering on. And the second piece will be for the back of our monster. We will also need mesh cutaway stabilizer, a water-soluble topping, and this is a very important supply, and it's one that we don't want to skip, because if we do, our embroidery thread sends, tends to sink down into that design, so um, definitely don't want to skip the water-soluble topping. Next, we need temporary spray adhesive. Polyester stuffing, and of course we want the extra soft stuffing. It's the best because we want our monsters to be really soft. And our last supply that we need is a hand needle. I know, that bad word. <laughs> so what do we do first? Well, here we're going to hoop a single layer of, mush, of mesh cutaway stabilizer. 
Remember, Minky is a fabric that stretches, so that is why we're choosing a cutaway. We also want to avoid using a fusible stabilizer. If the iron gets too hot, we could end up melting the Minky fabric. And then our Minky monsters might be a little more scary looking than we wanted him to be. <laughs> We're, first going to, we're next going to spray the stabilizer lightly um, with our temporary spray adhesive. And a light coat is really all that we need on that. We have already brought the design into the machine, so we're ready to stitch that first color. And it's going to be our placement stitch. The machine is, is sewing out the shape of our monster so we will know exactly where we need to place our fabric. Because we had previously sprayed our stabilizer with a temporary adhesive spray, the stabilizer is tacky. So now we're going to position our minky fabric right side up. Remember, this is where you want to uh, check your nap. Make sure it's running in the direction that you want it to. And um, OK, bear with me here just a second. But if you haven't already fallen in love with these minky monsters, this is about the step where you start to really love them. When you're finding the direction of your minky, it's like you're petting your fabric all the time. <laughs> it's so soft, you just can't stop petting your fabric. Honestly, when I was doing this, my dog was giving me not so nice looks because he was really jealous. <laughs> but this fabric's just really, really soft and you'll love these minky monsters. When you place your minky fabric in the hoop, you want to make sure that you're covering the placement line. And you want to cover it by about a half an inch on all sides. I did not do this and the directions didn't call for it, but if you're a new embroiderer and you're a little uncomfortable about just laying this minky on top of your hoop, it's perfectly okay to go ahead and put a pin here in the corners or if you're even a little nervous about that, you're, uh, you can tape those corners down to make your fabric more secure. I didn't find that I needed to, but I've been embroidering for a long time, so um, if you're a beginner and you feel like you need to, it, uh, it's certainly okay to do that. Okay, so now the fun begins. We're going to lightly spray the temporary spray adhesive to the water-soluble topping. We're going to place the topping that's been sprayed. That side is going to be down on the minky fabric. We want the topping to hold, but we don't want to overspray and mat that minky fabric. We're using a topping because if we did not use it in our embroidery, it would get lost in all that minky fiber, which is why I said earlier it's really important uh, not to skip this step. You would really not be happy with the outcome of your embroidery if you did. So remember, topping is your friend here. So here's our design that we're going to sew out. Your stabilizer is in the hoop, your minky fabric is covering your placement line, and your topping is placed on the minky fabric. I did at this point use pins to hold the corners down on my topping, and I pinned them as best I could all the way through the minky and the stabilizer. But go ahead and stitch out all the colors in the design except for the very last color. At this time, you want to remove the hoop from the machine, but you don't want to remove the fabric from the hoop. Um, and you want to try not to shift that inner hoop at this time either as you're pulling off some of that topping. But you're going to go ahead and clip all the jump and connecting threads. And it's really easy to do because when the topping's on there, it's keeping the threads away from the fabric. So it makes it a lot easier to go in there and cut those jump stitches. We're going to gently tear away the topping 
And I like to put my finger or my thumb over the threads as I'm pulling up on the topping. And that way the threads are more stable and they're not being pulled at the same time I'm pulling that topping away from my minky fabric. And another thing we want to do is not wet any excess topping that we couldn't remove. Um, we don't want to get the fabric wet at this time. I actually uh, sewed out several monsters and the topping always tore away really cleanly and I never had to come back and do the step of wetting the excess topping down. But you might have to, so let's save that part till the end. We're going to lay our second piece of minky fabric over the top. This piece is the back of your minky monster. Right sides will be facing each other and you can see from this picture that the back of the minky fabric is facing up. So your two right sides are together. Pin the corners to secure and I went through as many layers or all the layers as I could. And once again if you're worried about pins being here in the corner, you can always um, tape the corners down. Also, um, you just want to make sure when you're doing the embroidery that your machine doesn't hit the pins, but these are really way out of the embroidery area here. Next, we're going to reattach the hoop. And as you can see, I have pinned down those corners and um, it's well way away from the stitching. So we will reattach the hoop and um, stitch that last color. This stitch is called the seam stitch. And it basically just sews up your minky and there's no uh, open area. The stitches will sew through both layers of minky and close up the design. So how easy was that? This is why you're going to love these stitch and turn designs. Almost everything is done in the hoop with the press of the button. It's easy, it's fast, and it's fun. Okay, we're not done yet, so we need to remove the hoop from the machine. And now we're going to remove the fabric from the hoop. We're going to cut around the seam stitch about a fourth of an inch and then we're going to clip the curves and the corners and this just makes turning your minky monster inside out much easier, nicer looking. Um, you want to make sure you don't clip through the, steam, the seam stitch. Um, if you were watching the design sew out, you probably saw that it stitched the seam stitch twice. So if you do clip the first row of the seam stitch, you might not clip the second. But if you do, uh, don't worry. Just take it to your sewing machine and just close up that area and you'll be good to go. Once you have all the trimming and clipping done, pull the two minky fabrics apart. And this is pretty easy. You kind of tint that area. You want to make sure that you're going to only cut through that back layer and not through the front. And you're going to make about a, an inch and a half cut or a slit in the back of your minky monster. And then you're going to turn him right side out. We're going to use a chopstick to turn out the corners and the curves and get those pesky looking corners and curves looking good. Sometimes you have to really work at it, so don't be shy. Get in there and push those corners out. If you don't have a chopstick, be sure you check the polyester stuffing that you bought. Uh, they're now putting a chopstick in for you to use to stuff your projects with. So stuff your minky monster with polyester stuffing. I like my minky monsters to have a lot of stuffing. For me, more is better. Okay, so here's the bad news for some of you. <laughs> it's the four letter word, H-A-N-D. You will need to hand sew the opening closed. 
but honestly, it's going to take you longer to thread that needle than it is to whip stitch that inch and a half opening closed. So also is now the part where if there's any topping visible, go ahead and remove it and just remember to follow the manufacturer's instructions when doing so. Isn't he adorable? So cute. He is really cute, Terry. I'm just going to interject here for a second and sure. say, for those of you who aren't big fans of the hand stitching, um, the minky is really forgiving. So even if you're not a very good whip stitcher and you feel like you're not quite straight, that nap kind of hides any imperfections. So it makes it really fast to stitch it up. It is. It does go really quick. Okay, so let's put a, let's put a pocket on our minky monster. In this design pack, there are two designs that you can add a pocket to. The first design, 12399-10, is an applique design. But the second design, 12399-11, is a monster design. And that's the one we're going to use because we want to do the monster. We're going to do exactly the same way. We're going to stitch the design as you normally would, but we're going to stop after it comes to stitching the pocket placement stitch. We're going to carefully remove the water-soluble stabilizer from that stitched area. We want to be real careful, and we don't want to pull the monster out of the hoop. I actually found that I, could, you know, if I was real careful, I could take all of my water soluble topping off at this time. We really didn't need it after this. So to make the pocket, we're going to use a piece of cotton fabric and we're going to measure it to be four and a half inches wide and it's going to be 11 inches high. We're just going to fold it over and you'll have raw edges right down here at the bottom, but here we'll have a folded, clean edge. So fold it in half with wrong sides together. It should now measure four and a half by five and a half inches high. We're going to lightly spray the temporary spray adhesive. And I actually skipped this step. I just used some blue painter's tape and I just stuck it to my fabric and the minky at the same time and that held well enough for me to uh, do the stitching. So now we're going to center the pocket over the stitched line and we're going to line up that fold edge right at the top edge of the stitching line. And as you can see, I did put some pins in here to hold it and I just lined my blue tape right across the center. The pockets will extend beyond the stitching line on both the left and right hand side and also here at the bottom, but that's a good thing and that's what it's supposed to do. We're going to stitch the next color and this stitch is called the pocket cut line and tack down. Can you guess why? And I'm sure you can. It's tacks down the pocket and it lets you know where to trim around. If you're watching this stitch when, you're, uh, when it's on the embroidery machine, you'll see that it stitches this area or this line twice. And it's giving it a good reinforcement stitch. We're going to use small, sharp scissors and carefully cut around that excess cotton fabric on the right and left hand sides as well as the bottom edge. We're going to cut right up to that pocket cut line and tack down stitch. And if you're using large scissors, it may make it much harder to get right up to that pocket cut line and tack down stitch. So small, sharp embroidery scissors are your best bet here. You're going to continue stitching, and as you're stitching, 
you will notice that you're creating a nice clean satin stitch and that's going to go both sides as well as the bottom edge and that's going to complete your pocket. This color change is called the pocket cover stitch. The folded edge, you can't see too much but it's right here, but the folded edge will be open so that your Mickey Monster now has a nice hiding spot. And here's your finished Minky Monster with a pocket. Isn't he lovable? Let's see what we can put in his hiding spot. How about a tooth for the Tooth Fairy? Here I customized the pocket fabric uh, before I put the pocket on. I embroidered it with the long long 11 inch pieces and then I folded it. I used built in fonts from my uh, machine and then I did cut this fabric a little bit larger so that I could center it up and make it look just right. And I could have actually even put a name on here and personalized it and made it more personal. How about a special occasion gift card holder? You could have several of these made up ahead of time, no gift wrapping needed, and it's really like getting two gifts instead of one. And I think kids would really much more enjoy this Minky Monster than a gift bag. I love this Boo Boo Minky Monster. Same Minky Monster, we just put some ice in a little snack bag here and you can slip it in the pocket and he becomes your Boo Boo Minky Monster. How cute is this Minky Monster? My friend Sabrina picked this Minky Monster out and she had me change the color to pink and then I used her favorite color purple to do some of the embroidery thread designs here. And before I did the last color, which is the seam stitch, I cut a piece of ribbon probably about four or five inches, just doubled it over and placed it in the seam stitch line. And then when the seam stitch stitched, it just uh, stitched over and connected the ribbon in. So after stuffing, after turning inside out and stuffing it, I added this little key fob and she placed it on her backpack. This would make a great idea for birthday party favors and in fact I'm sure a lot of you moms and grandmas know that there's a monster movie coming out this summer <laughs> and um, I've already seen the party wear to purchase the cups, the plates, and I think this would make a really cute uh, party favor. It'd be one of a kind and they're really fast and easy to sew up. So Embroidery Online has several stitch and turn designs to make, but I'd like to show you just a couple of my favorites. Here you can see the Veggie Garden playset. It's Embroidery Online Collection 12412. And one of the reasons I really like this playset is my sister's a dietitian and she really likes these types of learning toys. Um, boys and girls both like to play with food toys. So why not start them out with a playset that teaches them to love their veggies? And it's done the same way. You're going to do the embroidery and then you'll place the back on top and it'll stitch around and you'll stuff it and you'll have your little uh, toy here to play with and here's a, this is just on a little mat that uh, you, they've got some of these tucked into but a really cute idea. That one does come with the, um, the instructions for that little quilt with those pockets in it. The collection has that in it. Okay good. Bonus. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the Little Bets by Soft Serve Creations. It's Embroidery Online Collection 80002. And these designs are both applique and stitch and turn. And they're really designed for kids and adults 
I'm sorry, they're actually designed for kids, but adults can really use them too. And in this set, we're seeing right now the A, B, and C, but let me show you the H here. Here's the applique H, and here's the stitch and turn H. And um, how cute would a, a, an embroidered towel be with this H and then adding the words welcome or welcome to the neighborhood? And then stitching out the stitch and turn design, and then maybe putting a little of that jute cord in here like we did for the backpack where the ribbon was, and using that, that cord to tie the towel up and, and give it as a housewarming gift. I think that would just be really cute. Um, my friend Donna gave me this idea, and I just can't wait to sew this one up for one of my new neighbors. I, I think they'd really like that. Here's Cocktail Hour by Stephanie Stouffer, and it's Embroidery Online Collection 61067. And the artist Stephanie Stouffer has created these playful uh, cocktail hour designs, and the stitch and turn designs in this collection are these coasters. And this collection also features some 9 by 9 inch uh, artwork. And there are coordinating elements that can be used in the corner of a napkin. So, um, you know, this would also make a cute house, housewarming gift, hostess gift. Um, besides planning your next party around, the designs are just really, really cute. And there's lots of possibilities with the designs in this collection. These next designs are the Minky Mayhem. They're embroidery online designs, 12299. And here the designs are used to make a really sweet mobile. And the other thing I thought that would be really cute, I know that when my son was a toddler, we sang Old MacDonald not once, not twice, but <laughs> probably a thousand times. But wouldn't it be cute to put these in a little bag and then when you're looking for the animal to sing, just to pull one out and, and then you have to do the animal sound for that one that you pulled out. But they also make great little toys also. And here's the Nativity Playset. It's Embroidery Online Design 12365. And the picture says it all. It's just a great Christmas gifts, and look how big these sew out right here. And this mat comes with it, the instructions for this mat comes with it too, Christy? Yes, it does. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So another bonus there. Okay, I've saved my best, or my favorite for last. It is Polar Pals number 12322 design collection. And in that collection, there are only two stitch and turn designs, and this is one of them. And it's the jumbo bear, so you get to use, or I'm sorry, your jumbo polar bear, and you get to use your big jumbo hoop. And when making this design, I wanted to show y'all how easy these designs really are. And so I asked my friend Sabrina to come over and help me. She's nine, and she named her little bear Snow, Snowflake. And Sabrina has only been sewing a little less than a year, and this is her second embroidery project. Her first one was at Christmas time. She put names on scarves for her family members. But she actually came after school one afternoon, and this was a quick afternoon project, and she had it done in a couple hours, stuffed, and and ready to take home. So I'm hoping I can inspire you all to make your own little snowflake and and I hope you love it as much as my friend Sabrina does. Embroidery Online has a bonus for you. If you order these 25 designs on the CD-ROM, you'll receive five free squeakers. They will transfer transform your minky monster into a squeaky toy. 
They're great for kids and for pets. So take advantage of this offer while it lasts. Once again, it's 25 designs and the design number is 12399. And Embroidery Online carries much more uh, stitch and turn designs. And I know there's one just perfect for your project, but I hope you enjoyed today's presentation. Thank you so much, Terry. Um, we do, do have... have oh, I was going to say, I, was, I don't have any questions just yet, but I will um, open up the floor here. So I'll be watching here to see if there's any questions. Um, I do have a link that we will be sending in the email when we send the recording of the presentation. We're also going to be sending a link where we've actually compiled most of the stitch and turn designs we have into a category. So um, for those of you who are interested in seeing what other stitch and turn designs we have, um, we'll be sending that to you via email. Okay, great. So we'll, um, I'm just going to open up the floor for questions and comments. Getting lots of thank yous and great job, Terry. Oh, thank you all. I really appreciate it. I'm so glad you joined me today. It was, it was fun. Well, while we have a moment, um, I also would like to um, thank my dad, because I know he's watching. And he's not much of a machine embroidery person, but He's my cheerleader, and I appreciate him taking off work to watch me, so thanks, Dad. That's and awesome. And I probably should put a good word in for my husband who helped me on my tef technical difficulties. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so it's good to have handy people. Mm -hmm. um, a really great comment, Terry, just thought I'd share. Since, since she's not looking at the um, notes here, I'll be sure to share them. Uh, one, one attendee says, my first webinar, have never done a stitch and turn, but I will try now. Thanks so much. Great. I hope I inspired a lot of people. Well, as those of you who have attended one of our webinars know, what we will normally do is we'll go ahead and kind of close up the presentation, and I'm going to turn off the recording, um, but I, we will stay on the line for another 10 minutes or so to answer questions. Um, however, if you have additional questions that you think of later, um, then we will... Um, be happy to take those via email. Um, the emails that you received to confirm your registration to the webinar and um, the ones that were sent to you to remind you about the webinar today, you can just reply directly to that email and that will come back to us. Um, so please do feel free to share any comments or questions that way um, and we'll be sure to get them addressed. If you have a question for Terry, um, you can just sit, reply to that email and I'll make sure it gets to her. Um, so feel 